So our first story is about Cuba. Cuba has been in the news, uh, kind of floating around the news quite a bit. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll start the story with this. So they just approved two pretty major vaccines in their country uh, that have approximately a 92 percent efficacy. And that efficacy is probably going to, you know, keep going up and all that sort of stuff. Um, so the so I, I apologize if I fucking butcher the names of these, uh, you know, vaccines. Uh, but it looks like the Soberana 2 and the Abdallah vaccine both have pretty uh, similar results. 92 percent efficacy, three booster shots. So instead of two, it would be three. Um, and, uh, they're also pretty strong against the beta and Delta variants. So we're looking at, you know, a vaccine that can pretty much help with the variants that are coming out. Um, and by the way, I, I, I also want to say this is, I do think that the vaccines in America were rushed. Uh, I absolutely believe that they were rushed. Um, and I think we would have seen a lot less, of those kind of crazy side effect stories had things waited a little bit, but you know, Biden didn't want to wait. I don't think anybody from the American scientific community, which is linked to American politics and American money, uh, wanted to wait because it was all about, let's get the economy back. Um, it's not let's help the people. It's how can we use this thing to get people to start spending money the way that they need to. Um, and, you know, we we the reason we saw all those stories, the reasons why all those side effects were coming out was because of that. I think it was rushed. Um, and the thing, I mean, the thing with science is that it learns, it evolves, it changes, that sort of stuff. But I do think it was rushed, whereas I think vaccines that are coming out of places like Cuba uh, that have taken their time. And they're like, yeah, okay, we need a, a third booster because guess what? We know coronaviruses evolve, mutate, and change rather quickly. Um, we should probably, like, take the time to do this right. Uh, so now Cuba is on track to become the first fully vaccinated country on the planet. They're, they're claiming by the end of the year, they'll be able to vaccinate all 11 million adults in their country, which is huge. That's like a huge huge claim to say right now at the same time there are u.s sanctions and embargoes that are preventing cuba from effectively distributing this vaccine not just to their own people but to other countries that need it as well right there's a lot of south american countries that need it uh there's uh, a, a lot of island nations that need this african uh, african nations that need it india india needs more vaccines about two months ago, we were talking about how India is facing this devastating fucking wave of of um, of COVID. Maybe it was a month ago, right? Um, and I mean, for the the personal attachment to that is not only because it's the country that I was born in, but also my parents were going there because my grandfather had passed away, and I was like. OK, holy shit. I hope that you guys are going to be OK because this is scary. And there were reports that the United States could, uh, you know. Open up the patents and send it over to the Serum Institute of India so that they can start developing vaccines on their own and distributing it to their people. But the patents were closed and Bill Gates basically said, well, it'll cost us money. So we don't want to do that again capitalism choosing capital over people whereas socialism would choose people over profit and so would communism because it's about the community and not the profit uh so countries like cuba i mean mexico came out and said hey um you know we're trying to vaccinate as many of our people as possible but right now we have a little bit of a surplus of the vaccine that we're using so we're going to send our surplus over to india America was hoarding a vaccine that isn't even approved in this country just in case. Just in case for what? Just in case you find another country that needs it more and try to figure out a way to use sanctions and, and, and economics to fucking screw those people over, to exploit them, to hold them hostage? Why are you, why are you uh, accumulating that many vaccines 
of a, of, of a vaccine that's not even approved in your own country. AstraZeneca is not approved here. It is approved in India. It is approved in the UK, kind of. I think AstraZeneca was um, sent to the back burner a little bit. But Cuba wants to do it, right? They're like, hey, we're ready to do it. But right now, Cuba's Cuba's on track to do that, to, to become the first fully vaccinated country. But they are still having a problem with syringes, right? They need more syringes. They can't manufacture as many syringes. But they can't get those syringes. Why? Because there's U.S. sanctions and embargoes and blockades that they can't get the equipment that they need. They can't get the food that they need. Same thing with Iran. Iran's facing the same thing. They're saying, hey, we would like to vaccinate our people, but you guys have imposed these sanctions on us. And, you know, if Biden wants to come out and be Mr. Anti-Trump, which is something that he wants to be, why in the fuck would you keep those murderous sanctions in place? If you want to flip, if you if you want to show that you're the humanitarian president, now would be the time to say, yes, we have our ideological differences. But right now we need to 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 push forward so that, you know, we don't have to shut the country down again. We don't have to shut the globe down again. Come winter time. Why would you not do that? These sanctions are clearly preventing medical uh, equipment, food, resources that that cu countries like Cuba and Iran need from getting to those people. And that's what U.S. sanctions do. That's what all sanctions do. They're not economic sanctions. They're economic warfare. The fact that they have this vaccine that can be distributed across the world that I'm sure that they will share the patents of with whoever they feel needs it That should be a, a signal to for the Biden administration to say, OK, let's lift these sanctions. Let's get rid of these blockades. Let's focus on helping people. But they're not. What are they doing instead? Uh, what they're doing instead is uh, basically claiming that, well, this is communism's fault. The reason why they don't have these these resources and stuff coming to them is because of communism. That's really all it is, which is bullshit which is a total lie. The reason why they're not getting in is because of the U.S. sanctions and blockades, which is economic war. It's economic warfare. That's what it should be called. Economic sanctions is an, is an inaccurate term. What they really are is economic warfare. So they'll impose these sanctions. The people of the country start to, to, to suffer. There becomes this disparity that happens. And then they go, ah, communism. See, it's failing. See how they're suffering over there? Because, because look, what's in charge? Communism. No, no, no. It's outside interference from capitalist countries like America that are causing these people to suffer. You don't, you don't seem to mention that, though. But they go, oh, well, we put these sanctions because the people are suffering because, uh, 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 of, of communist rule. Wait, what? If you if that is the case, hold on, if that is the case, which we don't which we haven't seen because nobody bothers to go back in history to take a look at whether it is communism causing that or not. Fine. If you want to claim that it's communism doing that, then OK, get rid of your sanctions, get rid of your sanctions, let communism work, because even with your sanctions, the people are suffering. Right. If the point of the sanctions is for the government to go, oh, well, we need to take care of our people better. And the government's going, yeah, we'd love to take care of our people. But like your sanctions are getting in the way and they go up. Oh, well, that's because you're not treating your people properly. It's this loop. It's what abusers do. <laughs> this is this is how abusers talk. Fine. If, if you believe it's communism, fine. Get rid of your sanctions. Get rid of your embargoes and blockades and then see what happens. If the people continue to suffer in a year, then, yeah, I think everybody can accept, oh, yeah, OK, that was because of communism. And maybe we need to put sanctions on this government so that they act better. But what will most likely happen is that the people under this country's rule will start to thrive. They'll get the equipment that they need because other countries want to do business with them. They're not violating human rights under <laughs> under under that rule under communist rule, under socialist rule, neither one of them. 
they have health care. No one's in medical debt. People are taken care of. It's not they're not developing industries that exist in the short term. Right. Cars, technology, phones last a little bit longer because they're not looking for endless profit. They're looking for how to better humanity. That's what will likely happen. So now there are a bunch of these protests over there. And what's happening is they're they're using those protests. And I think some of them, you know, they're they're th that this might actually be the case is like they are they are saying, oh, we're against this government because this government is is causing us to suffer, not knowing that the reason why they're suffering is because of U.S. sanctions. They're using these protests, people like Marco Rubio, Biden and all that um, to demonize communism, to say, well, look, the, the, the people of Cuba are, are 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 sick of it, are fed up with this stuff. So they're they're revolting. They're they're protesting against it. Uh, blah blah blah. No, what they're really protesting, whether they know it or not, is U.S. sanctions and blockades. I will keep saying that till it sinks into people's heads, because I know this video. I know I know that this is going to get a bunch of trolls to come down and start talking about how communism has killed so many people. No, authoritarianism has killed a lot of people. Capitalism which is an undemocratic economic system, has killed more people. It hasn't uplifted anybody from poverty. Very few people. And those people are up at the top and they control the government, which is then oppressing the lower classes, which is then creating this cycle of violence. Henceforth, capitalism doesn't pull people out of poverty. If it did, we would have way less homeless people in America we would have way less people working two to three jobs to make ends meet. And if you're claiming that's what capitalism is, then you've proven my point. <laughs> you, have pe you have people like fucking Marco Rubio coming out and being like, well, the Cuban military shouldn't fire upon its own citizens, which is true. I don't think any military should be firing upon its own citizens. But you don't say that when American military does that to its own citizens. Last summer, how many how many like the U.S. Marshals were kidnapping people? The cops were firing on on average civilians. The National Guard gets constantly called in anytime there's a protest because a killer cop keeps walking free. The murders of Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, uh, Mike Brown, Antoine Rose, Eric Garner. Sandra Bland. I mean, the list goes on and on. These people walk free. So every time there's a protest to say these people shouldn't be walking free and our lives are, are just as important as, as yours, the National Guard gets called and fires on its own citizens. Yet Marco Rubio stays silent when it comes to that. See the hypocrisy in this messaging here? There's a problem with the way that this story is being told. But all of it's performative, right? Like Joe Biden is just and, and Marco Rubio, they're all being performative. Re-election's coming up. Marco Rubio needs the Cuban vote. And he's going to sit there and say, well, yeah, we want Cubans to come to America because they'll have a better life. Because that'll get him the Cuban vote in florida because the, because more than likely the people that are coming to this country are from from places like cuba venezuela and stuff like that are all the upper class folks they're not the average working class person the other part is it's very likely that most Americans don't know the deep history of Cuba. I, I, I'm not going to say I know the deep history of Cuba because I haven't done that research yet. But I know propaganda when I see it. I know the way that the terminology is used. Don't forget, a couple weeks ago, the Biden administration and the United States Navy have equated the term socialism with domestic terror, political ter terror, and neo-Nazis. Why? Because we put people over profit. Because we want you to have a healthy life. Because we don't want people to work three jobs to make ends meet. 
we don't want people to go homeless. So that makes us domestic terrorists. That's insanity. <laughs> if Joe Biden really wants to go behind beyond the performative of saying we stand by the Cuban people, good. If you want to stand by the Cuban people, lift your fucking homicidal sanctions. Let these people do what they need to do. Keep your fucking grubby hands off of Cuba. Keep your grubby hands off of Iran. Keep your grubby hands out of Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, Honduras, Colombia, Nicaragua, Mexico, all of these countries, Guatemala. You have no business putting your grubby little shit hands on those countries. If communism is really as bad as it is, okay, let them be under communist rule. See what happens. More than likely, we'll find out that it's not all that bad. And this decades-long McCarthyist Cold War bullshit will be proven wrong. And that's what they're afraid of. So they need to control the narrative. They need to control the economy. They need to, they need to put these sanctions to prove themselves right. But it's only because of, the, of, of, of capitalist interference are why these people are suffering. Pop over your comments. Let's look over. Got some folks tuning in. Gene, good to see you. Holly, hello. How's it going? Uh, Gene, for, formerly Climate Rebel. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, that's, that's good to know. I was going to say, oh, cool. We got some new, uh, uh, new, new viewers, but it's good to see you. Welcome back, Gene, I should say. Welcome back. Um, Holly's saying apparently the protests in Cuba are in part about access to the vaccines. Why? I mean, why wouldn't it be though? I, I'm I'm not surprised that that's that's a part of it. I I didn't read that in part of the stories, but you know I'm I'm sure that is a hundred percent a part of it. I didn't read that in there, but I think a lot of people are are paying more attention to the fact that the U.S. sanctions are the big part of why this is happening. Uh, Gene says Black Bear News. Oh, just pa it just scroll down. Black Bear News reported on an article that debunked it. The pics were of a different protest. That's wonderful. That's awesome. But that, I mean, but that's what it is. Even the, even the president kind of came out and was just like, hey, these protests aren't anti-Cuban or anti-communism. They, they're anti-American sanctions. Like, that's why we, I, I want people to know that. Like, y if you believe that this is about communism, then if it's an anti-communist protest, then like you're you're not listening to the to the actual people that are like in the revolution that helped us get to this point. Um, and yeah, Black Bear News is something that I've been trying to I, I need to sit down and watch, but it's hard, man. I, I have like the the 10 people that I that I watch and I barely get through them. <laughs> so like I know people suggest stuff and uh, uh, and it's like. Ah, uh, I want to watch this thing, but I got these other sources to watch. So it, I, it's it's super hard. So uh, I, I appreciate you sharing that story because it it definitely does get uh, gets lost in the in 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 the in the noise that we hear. Uh, Fred says these morons are sharing images of protests from around the globe and claiming them as Cuba. I saw one for that was from Argentina. Yeah, you know that was. Um, uh, that 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 was interesting because I did see some of those photos and I was like, these don't look th this looks like stuff I've seen. You know. From from elsewhere in the world, it's it's. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's what I mean, people don't know, right? Like, that's the thing is like people just don't know. They don't know what they're actually looking at half the time. And when it comes from mainstream sources, you got to double check it because they're not. uh they're not they're not fucking accurate that's the word i'm looking for sorry i'm i'm like trying to read your comments and come up with <laughs> with this thing <laughs> so uh, i apologize if i'm a little slow uh ba -ba 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 -ba. that says ivermectin but wait it only costs a few bucks and its patent ran out a few years ago. Is that what's going on with ivermectin? I'm not particularly well versed in that. I know it's an anti-parasitic, uh, which, you know, they're, they're, India has a bunch of those drugs that are anti-parasitics, 
but they also act as other things. Like there's a, a, a medication I took that was basically like, like a advanced ibuprofen. So when I would get, I got heat stroke when I was in India and my aunt gave me this medication. You know, I drank some like electrolyte water. It's called Electrol. And I drank that and then she gave me this, this pill and it's like an antiparasitic, but it helps with headaches, migraines, stuff like that. Um, I, I don't know enough about ivermectin to, to say one way or the other, but you know, again, if it's, if it's something that isn't going to help big pharma, I would very much assume that that is going to be, you know, kind of demonized and thrown out there. Uh, but I know there's some folks doing like a world ivermectin day. I'm not really sure what's going on with it. That's, that's another one of those stories where I, I've seen it, but I haven't been able to track it and follow it and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it, if, if it's patents run out a few years ago, then I bet somebody's going to try to grab a, you know, generic version of it or something or, or, or grab those patents. And, and if, if it's, if it's anywhere even near a cure all for anything, not even for COVID, if it's like a malaria cure all, or like it helps your digestive system get better so you don't get sick that often. Uh, you know, they'll they'll buy up the patents and then fucking kill the medication. You'll never see it. You'll never see it. And uh, and again, I, I would wager to bet that if the sanctions are lifted, that the uh, so Soberana. I, I, again, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing these words. Soberana and uh, Abdallah will end up sharing what they know with the rest of the world that's that's what you should do these these patent laws are ridiculous um and they're an impediment they're they're 100 percent an impediment to bettering humanity bettering mankind um and stuff like that so uh zuzvik says he's behind 10 minutes do i have a panera uh do i have a panera i do i do have a panera i do have a panera around um, but you know, I, I always feel weird about going in and getting just a cup of coffee to, to, uh, um, just sit there and I don't know, like do my work. I, it, it just feels weird Then I just refill my coffee and I get, it get too jittery. I'm, I mean, you know, it's like two, three hours of writing a night. I, I can handle that going to a bar. It's weird. I think it's psychological to, <laughs> to be writing at a bar. I don't know what it is. But I feel more comfortable in, in that environment. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. And please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.